In chapter three, we're interested in uh, uh, learning quantitative relationships between different substances that are involved in a chemical reaction. So for example, if uh, we look at the combustion reaction between gasoline and oxygen, the gasoline and oxygen are consumed and we create two new compounds, carbon dioxide and water. If we know the amount of gasoline that's involved in a reaction, say we know the mass, we're going to show you how to figure out the number of gasoline molecules that are in that given mass of gasoline. Now that defines a mass number relationship. Um, so we're going to see that in sections three and four, uh, the relationship between the formula weight and this number concept of the mole. In addition, there are important number number relationships that we're going to look at, which are embodied in chemical equations. So for example, um, if we know the number of gasoline molecules that are reacting with our oxygen, from a balanced chemical equation, we can figure out the number of oxygen molecules that are required to react with that gasoline. And if we wanted to know the mass of oxygen that's required to react with that gasoline, well then we can look back at our mass number relationship, how to go from the number of oxygen molecules to the mass of oxygen molecules. And we could do the same thing for the carbon dioxide and water. So if we know again our mass of gasoline that's burned, we can figure out the numbers of carbon dioxide and water molecules formed as well as their masses. So the first thing that we're going to look at are number relationships that are embodied in what we call a chemical equation. So the chemical equation specifies all of the different components, all the different substances that are involved in a chemical reaction and um, shows number relationships between all the components. So in this particular chemical equation, we're specifying three substances, hydrogen, nitrogen, and ammonia. The plus sign means reacts with, so we're saying that we have hydrogen molecules are reacting with nitrogen molecules, and the arrow means to produce, so we're producing ammonia. In addition, everything on the left side of the arrow, the things that are reacting together, we call reactants, and everything that's produced from the consumption of these reactants to the new substances are called the products. Now, we have two different kinds of numbers here. We have the subscripts here, two, two, and three, and we have these bigger numbers that are out in front, and we need to distinguish between them. So, first of all, the two here means that we have our substance hydrogen is a diatomic molecular substance, right, consisting of two atoms stuck together. Same thing for the nitrogen. It means we've got a molecule consisting of two atoms of nitrogen. And uh, for ammonia, we have uh, a ratio of one to three of nitrogen to hydrogen. So a picture for that would look like this. So we have one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. Now the big number three, we call that a stoichiometric coefficient and it acts on all of the components of the substance. So for example, the three here means three hydrogen molecules. So we have a total of six hydrogen atoms here. We have one nitrogen molecule. We, the, the one is um, understood. And here we have two for representing two ammonia molecules. Now, what these are doing is making sure that we have what's called a balanced chemical equation. In a balanced chemical equation, all of the atoms on the left side and all of the atoms on the right side are present in equal amounts. So for example, if we count out our hydrogen atoms on this side, we have three hydrogen molecules, two atoms each for a total of six hydrogen atoms. And if we look on the product side, we have two molecules of ammonia, three hydrogen atoms each is a total of six hydrogen atoms. So we would say that 
our reaction is balanced with respect to the number of hydrogen atoms. What we're doing here is making our chemical equation consistent with Dalton's postulate that no atoms are created and no atoms are destroyed, um, which is also consistent with the law of mass conservation. If we look at nitrogen, we have the same situation. Right? We have uh, one nitrogen molecule, two nitrogen atoms each. We have two, nit two ammonia molecules, one atom of nitrogen each, with a total of two nitrogen atoms each on either side. So the stoichiometric coefficients in a balanced chemical equation specify the number ratios of things as they react. So for example, uh, hydrogen and nitrogen react in a 3 to 1 number ratio. For every three molecules of hydrogen uh, present in your sample, you need one molecule of nitrogen to react with those three. So these are being taken away in a 3 to 1 uh, number ratio, and for every three molecules of hydrogen consumed, you create two molecules of ammonia. So again, we see a 3 to 1 number ratio for the reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen. Uh, we see a 3 to 2 number ratio for the consumption of hydrogen to the creation of ammonia, and we see a 1 to 2 number ratio for the consumption of nitrogen to the creation of ammonia. So I just want to make it clear the distinction between the stoichiometric coefficient, right, the big number in front of the entire formula, and a subscript. So the 2 here denotes 2 water molecules like this, whereas if you put the 2 down here, you end up with a completely different substance. This is water, this is hydrogen peroxide, and they're completely different, right? This consists of to a uh, 2 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, this is a 1 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. So let's look at another example of a chemical reaction equation. So this one is specifying that uh, sodium metal is reacting with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen, um, and it's balanced. So we're saying that for every two atoms of sodium, we are required uh, to react with two water molecules to form two formula units of sodium hydroxide and uh, one molecule of hydrogen gas. Now, there's additional information in the chemical equation besides these number relationships, and that is the phases of the different components. So S uh, implies solid, so now you should be thinking uh, that you have a chunk of sodium metal as a solid is immersed in liquid water, so the reaction is taking place at the interface uh, between the liquid and the solid, and so the sodium metal is actually dissolving to form sodium hydroxide uh, as an aqueous solution. So this is a mixture, this is not a pure substance, this is sodium hydroxide dissolved in water. And in addition, at the interface of, the, of where the water is contacting the sodium metal, you're, you're generating hydrogen gas bubbles that are coming up off of the solid. Sometimes additional information will be included. Sometimes you'll see a Greek letter delta above the reaction arrow. That means that uh, to get the reaction to go to at a reasonable rate, you need to add heat. And sometimes, um, a chemical substance is also added to the chemical reaction to speed up the reaction. That's called a catalyst. Uh, the other property of a catalyst is that it's neither consumed nor destroyed in the reaction. So um, it's neither a reactant nor a product. So you shouldn't put it as either a reactant or a product. And instead, we just put it right over the reaction arrow. Now, it turns out in this particular reaction shown here, you don't need a catalyst because uh, as soon as you immerse sodium in water, it reacts vigorously to form the hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide. So now let's go ahead and, and address how one would go about balancing a chemical equation. Here's some guidelines to read on your own, so please pause the video and take a look at it. 
All right, now we're going to use these guidelines to balance the following chemical equations. So here's methylamine, which is reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, water, and molecular nitrogen. So our most complex molecule is methylamine, shown here, because there are three different elements that are all grouped together in one place. Note also uh, that <clears throat> we need to look to see where these elements are in the product. So if we look at carbon, carbon's in only one place on this side of the reaction, right here. What that means is that whatever stoichiometric coefficient we pick here, it's directly linked to this one. Carbon there to carbon there and nowhere else. So this is a great place to start to balance our uh, chemical equation. Another place would be hydrogen because all of the hydrogen is in one place on this side of the reaction. All of the hydrogen is in this place on this side of the reaction. So for the same reason, this stoichiometric coefficient is directly linked to this one through hydrogen. And the nitrogen is in one place here and the nitrogen is one place there. So what this means is that um, a place to begin to balance this chemical equation, uh, you can start with either carbon, hydrogen, or nitrogen, um, and it really doesn't matter. Now if you look at oxygen, oxygen's a bad place to start because even though oxygen is just found in one place on the reactant side, right here, governed by one stoichiometric coefficient, when we look for oxygen on the product side, we see it's in two different places. So, um, in other words, whatever number we put in here, we have to adjust in two different places for the total amount of oxygen. And so it's very difficult to figure out what the unique numbers here need to be for oxygen right at the beginning. We're better off doing it at the end when we can first lock in carbon and hydrogen in these parts of the molecule. All right, so now we're ready to balance our uh, chemical equation. We've already identified the most complex molecule and we've also identified regions uh, on the product side where they, the individual atoms here occur only once. So we can start with either carbon, nitrogen, or hydrogen. Let's start with uh, nitrogen. Alright, so let's do some counting. If we have one methylamine molecule, it's one atom of nitrogen on the reactant side. Uh, we have one molecule of nitrogen on this side, so that's two nitrogen atoms. So uh, to make both sides have two nitrogen atoms, we need to multiply uh, our number of methylamine molecules by two. So now we have two nitrogen atoms, and our chemical equation is balanced with respect to nitrogen. If we look at carbon next, uh, we count two methylamine molecules, that's one carbon atom per molecule, so it's two carbon atoms. On the reactant side, we just have one carbon atom on the product side, so we need to count two CO2 molecules. All right, now we have two carbon atoms on both sides, and let's go ahead and look at hydrogen next. All right, so if we count hydrogen, we have two methylamine molecules. Each methylamine molecule has five hydrogen atoms each. So it's a total of 10 hydrogen atoms on the reactant side. If you look on the product side, all of our hydrogens here in water, uh, so it's two hydrogen atoms per molecule. So if we have five molecules, we'll have 10 hydrogen atoms. So right now we have a chemical equation that's balanced for carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, right? Nitrogen, the stoichiometric coefficient's one. And so the only thing that's left is oxygen. The only thing that we can change is this one stoichiometric coefficient that we haven't messed with yet, right? We, we want to leave these alone because these specify our carbon and our hydrogen. So we just count what oxygen atoms we have available here. That's uh, two per molecule times two molecules is four oxygen atoms. Uh, one oxygen atom per molecule times five molecules is five oxygen atoms, so that's a total of nine oxygen atoms on the product side. Now, uh, one molecule of oxygen has two oxygen atoms, so if we had four oxygen molecules, we would have eight oxygen atoms. So how are we going to get nine? Well, if you took an oxygen molecule and you split it in half, right, and you just counted half of the molecule, you'd end up with four and a half O2 molecules 
would be nine oxygen atoms, right? So four and a half is the same thing as nine halves, so we'll use the stoichiometric coefficient nine halves. And so um, our chemical equation is balanced, and there's nothing wrong uh, with our representation here. Conventionally, though, um, we get rid of fractions. So how can we possibly do that? We need to keep the relative number ratios here the same. In other words, we've got, we need to have uh, CO2 to water to nitrogen in a 2 to 5 to 1 number ratio. Well, if we um, perform a multiplication operation on every single stoichiometric coefficient, we will not change the relative number ratio. What we need to do to get rid of this fraction is to multiply by 2, right? So let's multiply everything by 2. We double all the co coefficients. We get 4, 9, 4, 10, 2. Now, uh, see, we've still preserved the relative number ratios, right? This is 2 to 5 to 1. 4 to 10 to 2 is still 2 to 5 to 1 if you divided everything by 2, right? Same thing on this side. We still preserve the number ratios. All right, so that's how you balance the chemical equation.